Jesus, you are indeed the Savior. Your blood accomplished salvation for all of those for whom you died. And Jesus, you hold them fast within your grip, faithful until the end. Jesus, our confidence is in you. It is only in you. I pray that as we examine you today around your table, that you would be pleased, you would be honored with our thoughts and our words. And I pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Well, this is the point in our service where we take some time to remember Jesus. And we remember Jesus around his table. Uh, it's a time for Christians to remember who Jesus was and what he did on their behalf when he went to the cross, suffering God's wrath against them. In a moment, we're going to take a wafer and a bit of juice, and these are symbols. They're symbols of the body of Christ and the blood of Christ that was offered in place of sinners who had trusted him. Today, we're going to look at a passage that will help us remember Jesus rightly when Jesus describes himself as light. So if you have your Bibles, would you go ahead and turn to John chapter 8? We're going to be looking at verse 12 together. We have some men coming down the aisles. If you don't actually have a Bible with you, just raise your hand and they'll get one to you. And if you don't own a Bible, uh, this is our gift to you so that you can begin reading God's word for yourself. The setting of our passage starts actually in chapter 7. Jesus has left Galilee and he's come down to Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Booths. This occurred on an annual basis. It was a time when people would gather in Jerusalem and they would live in temporary shelters for a week. And this was God's mandate for Israel. He ordained this feast so that they would remember God's faithfulness to them when they were in the wilderness for 40 years before they entered into the promised land. So Jesus is in Jerusalem during this time, and he is preaching and he is teaching in the temple. And the Pharisees are there, and they are growing increasingly hostile towards Jesus. And the reason why is because they have recognized that his teaching is becoming a threat to them and their position as self-appointed religious leaders over Israel. But there are lots of common people there as well. And they have mixed opinions and mixed thoughts about Jesus. Some are saying, well, he's a good man. And others are saying, he leads people astray. So what is lacking in, in this setting is any kind of consensus about who Jesus is. And it is exactly what Jesus provides for us in our passage. So let's take a look at verse 12 together. As we're reading that passage, let's take a look at what Jesus says about the world. Let's take a look at what Jesus says about himself. And then we'll look at a promise that he makes. So Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So Jesus is teaching about light. And we know lots of things about light. Light brings illumination. Light provides what is essential to properly see and understand what is around you and your own situation. And in the absence of light, a person is unable to accurately assess their situation or their circumstances. We know all of those things. But Jesus is here and he is using light as an analogy for spiritual comprehension and understanding. Jesus speaks about the world, and we want to take a good look at what Jesus says about the world. He says, I am the light of the world. What Jesus is telling us here is that the world is blind to spiritual truth. We need to understand the scope of what he means when he says the world. Jesus is speaking comprehensively about mankind. He's not speaking about some people who are blind. He's not speaking about most people who are blind, or just Jews, or just Gentiles or young people who will eventually figure things out when they get a little older. Jesus is saying that it is all people who have this condition. Every single person in their natural born condition is spiritually blind, and they lack the ability to comprehend their spiritual condition and spiritual truth. It's good for us to ponder that for just a second. This is what Jesus is saying. He's saying that every person is born with a spiritual problem. And that problem is that they are unable to assess their condition before God on their own. Then Jesus speaks about himself. He says that I am the light of the world. He's saying that spiritual truth is found 
in one place, and it's found in the person of Jesus Christ. The teaching about Jesus, who he is, and what he did on the cross in place of those who would believe in him is what a person must possess and they must embrace in order to be rescued from their spiritual darkness. And it's not as if spiritual truth is found in any other competing belief system and that Christ is one of those. And Jesus is saying, no, spiritual truth is exclusively and only found in me. There is one singular source of truth, and that is the teaching about me. And Jesus goes on and he, he makes a promise. It's a guarantee that extends to a particular group of people. And that group of people that he makes this promise to are the people who are followers of him. Jesus says that those who follow him will not walk in darkness. Following Jesus involves a relinquishment. It involves a forsaking of your own understanding of what constitutes spiritual truth. And it involves embracing what scripture teaches about the person and the work of Jesus Christ. So then Jesus, after he, he speaks of this, he speaks of the benefit that comes to that person, that particular person who is a follower of Christ. He says that that person will not walk in darkness, but they will have the light of life. They will no longer walk through life with a broken understanding of spiritual truth. They will actually possess Christ himself and the new life that is found only in him. So that is our good news this morning, that uh, on one hand is the person who is born in spiritual darkness and spiritual lack of understanding and absence of understanding, that submitting yourself to Christ, following Christ, embracing what scripture tells about Christ gives you new life that is only found in Christ. And that's what we want to remember about Jesus this morning. When the men come and pass out the elements, take them and hold them if you are a follower of Christ. And remember your condition that you were born in. Remember the, the kind of person you were when you could not understand who Christ was. Perhaps you were in church or perhaps you were not. But remember that it was Christ himself who has the truth of who he is. And, and his words are what is truth. When you've prepared your heart, you take the elements on your own.